The human race has undergone numerous technological advancements throughout millions of years. We went from caves to buildings, stone tools to steel equipments, and hunting to food industries, just to name a few. Today, we live in a world that has mobile phones and Wi-Fi, easy transportation, malls and skyscrapers, and cutting-edge technology and medicine. Without human innovation, we would never have the world we live in today. Without human innovation, we would never have to deal with its consequences. Humans produce tons of fossil fuels, greenhouse gases, pollution, and waste each year. The overconsumption and overproduction of products are causes of global warming, mass deforestation, and the extinction of plants and animals. To continue with the practices that we have today will ultimately ruin the only planet we have. This is the pitfalls of innovation. Hello everyone, I am Randall Para and today we'll discuss about one particular biogeochemical cycle that occurs on ecological reservoir of land, which is phosphorus cycle. But first, what is biogeochemical cycle? Biogeochemical cycle is a natural cycle that circulates on ponds and elements that are essential for life. There are two types of biogeochemical cycle, gaseous and sedimentary. Gaseous cycle includes water, oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon cycle, while the sedimentary cycle includes earthbound elements such as iron, sulfur, calcium, and phosphorus. Now we can discuss more about the phosphorus cycle. The phosphorus cycle is a biogeochemical cycle that circulates the element phosphorus throughout the environment. First, the phosphorus buried under the rocks, then broken down by weathering, releasing the phosphorus, and the rain washes it down to the soil or bodies of water like oceans and rivers. After that, the animals consume the phosphorus on ground or water by eating plants. And when these animals die, the decomposers break down their bodies and the phosphorus return back to the land or soil. With the phosphorus being an element essential for life, the way the phosphorus cycle circulates throughout our environment must be preserved. But have we already begun to alter it? Good day everyone, I'm John Domi Piquinha. And today, I would like to talk about the anthropogenic effects humans have on the phosphorus cycle. You may be wondering what anthropogenic effects are. Well, these refer to human activities that cause environmental change. This may be positive changes such as reforestation, repopulation of near-extinct species, and environmental conservation. But usually, the term anthropogenic effects is used in more negative contexts, such as in discussion about deforestation, overpopulation, and climate change. I will be talking about negative anthropogenic effects to bring light to the adverse effect influences we have on the phosphorus cycle. As we discussed previously, human innovation have paved the way for technological advancements. One specific invention I would like to talk about is fertilizer. Fertilizer is a substance that is mainly made up of three elements, potassium, nitrogen, and phosphorus. It may cause faster and healthier plant growth which in turn increases and improves the quality of crop yields. Fertilizer is beneficial for farmers and large amount of quality of food being harvested help feed people around the world. However, there is a phenomenon called eutrophication. Eutrophication describes an increase of minerals and nutrients within a body of water. An overabundance of minerals and nutrients in the water causes dead zones, which are areas in body of water that contain too little oxygen for any life to survive. Algal blooms that can be threatened human health poor water quality and death of aquatic life. Although eutrophication can occur naturally, it can also be caused by human activities. One such activity is the use of fertilizer in crops. Farmers reapply fertilizer to their crops frequently. This causes an accumulation of phosphorus in the soil. When it rains and the phosphorus washes away into bodies of water, an overabundance of the elements occurs in the water. This causes eutrophication which is fatal for aquatic life and harmful for us humans as well. The way we have affected the phosphorus cycle is detrimental to the environment and unfortunately, the phosphorus cycle is not the only cycle we are affecting. We are causing adverse effects around the entire world. You could say we act almost like an invasive species. Hi, I'm Daniel Rodriguez and I will be going through the topic of invasive species and what invasive species that affect the phosphorus cycle. But what is an invasive species, you might ask? It describes any species that disrupts and causes harm to an ecosystem that is not native to. Invasive species are also called non-native species, alien species, 
and exotic species. Now, when it comes to invasive species that affect the phosphorus cycle, there are organisms such as nopaga mussels that play a big role as they can interfere with the phosphorus levels in bodies of water. However, there is one species I want to focus on that has and is continuously affecting the phosphorus cycle. The species Homo sapiens. Are we ourselves an invasive species? Let's discuss this further. For a species to be considered invasive, it must first tick a few requirements. Number one, it must be able to reproduce quickly. Well, with a population approaching 8 billion, one could argue that we reproduce very well. Number two, it must adapt to new ecosystems easily or quickly. Humans can be found all over the world and on every single continent. Number three, it must cause harm to the environment, economy, or human health. As we have discussed before, we have caused numerous adverse effects on the environment. Number four, it must be non-native. Well, this is where it gets a little complicated. The species Homo sapiens existed for hundreds of thousands of years. They were originally from Africa before we began to naturally migrate to other continents. Some argue that because we migrated naturally by ourselves, we can be considered native. But to others would say that we still fit in the description of an invasive species. Whether we are or aren't one though, it does not change our impact on the environment. Maybe we're worse than invasive. Maybe we're destructive. You may think that's a strong word. And you may also be wondering if our impact on the world and on the phosphorus cycle is as serious as we make it sound, or we're just blowing things out of proportion. Well, not only does our impact matter for the entire world, but it also matters on a much, much smaller scale. There is a field of study in biology that focuses on your genes and how they're affected by how you act and what your environment's like. I'm Adelisa Japon, and I would like to dive into the discussion on epigenetics. The study of epigenetics takes a look at the heritable changes in your phenotype, with your phenotype referring to your set of physical traits and characteristics. These changes also do not affect your genes themselves and are reversible. And if you're wondering if you've ever experienced epigenetic changes, it's most likely you have because it's a normal part of life for your epigenetics to change as you get older. Things that can cause epigenetic changes include diet, exercise, sleep, and other lifestyle choices. But these are mostly examples that have to do with personal decisions. What you want to eat, how much you like to exercise, and how much you want to sleep. But then there's also the environmental influence on a person's epigenetics. Things like air pollution and contaminated food and drinks can also cause epigenetic changes. But should it really be a normal part of anyone's life to have epigenetic changes due to environmental issues such as pollution and contaminants? human race has undergone numerous technological advancements throughout millions of years. And among all those years, it is now when our environment is at its worst. Most of the progress we've made has ultimately been to the detriment of our world. But that doesn't mean that we should stop being innovative. Yes, we produce tons of fossil fuels, greenhouse gases, pollution and waste. But we've also created biofuels, renewable energy, and electricity-powered machinery and vehicles. There's even ongoing research on plastic-eating microbes and other pioneering ideas that will hopefully reverse the damage to the environment. Human innovation has its pitfalls. It has brought a lot of bad, but it can bring just as much good. It's been geared for our benefit and our benefit only for too long. It's time we use technology, research, and innovation for the sake of our world and every other life that calls it home. Let's give our world the attention it deserves and not forget that we are part of it too.